simply prayed. He gave thanks. He broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. I want to just for a few moments reflect on the life of my father. There is a theme. He was fond of saying, Don't you see? I want to preach today. Now I see. Tim and I knew what paying bills meant. He 
was living on his own. Daddy always wanted the boy to be a preacher. Because Dr. Samuel H. Bullock Sr. was a country boy for real. He was from North Carolina. Something about them southern proud agrarian Negroes. Benjamin Elijah Mays wrote this book, Born to Rebel. Talks about how he got up one day as a teenager and just walked. My granddaddy got a similar kind of story. I don't know what it is about them walking. We sure don't want to walk nowhere now. We were slaves, the Underground Railroad, we had to have an Uber app. Granddaddy got up in North Carolina and walked, I figured out later, walk can mean ride trains. <laughs> Rode the train from North Carolina to Boston. Sent for his beloved Lucy. And on what was a garbage dump on the Jewish side of Roxbury, uh -huh. my grandfather built Pleasant Hill. Something strange about somebody that smell garbage but call it pleasant. How do you build sanctuary on top of mess? That's why, that's why, that's why. As I thought about the text, see, Daddy and I see because in the text, the writer is messing with our understanding of ocular ability. Come on now. Because they see Jesus but don't recognize him. And then when they recognize him, they no longer see him. And often wonder why my father has such a hold on me. He go out of town, I break out in hives. I don't know if, if Timothy and Sam have the same testimony, but I was always daddy's boy. Always love my father. He was everything you all have said. But he was so much more. Because my love for him ultimately manifested in a conversion to Christianity. Sit with 
deacon man. And build the handicap ramp with his own hand. Lay on the floor and lay the wood for this pulpit. See him pay that pocket line. Watch 
apostle brother. But he went down. He listened and he finally said, y'all are fools. The father would always tell me, son, the greatest success you'll ever reach in life will be determined by your capacity to suffer fools. Have to watch nothing. Because now I see. Jesus said, y'all are fools. See, because black people wear their emotions on their sleeves and because intelligence is something that people believe they cannot purchase with their own brains. We get offended when people tell us we don't know what we talk about. <laughs> the fool here just means y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Bible says that he began to explain to them the scripture and what happened. And all of the things concerning himself. And I think about my father, that's what he was. It was a consummate teacher. He was always telling us, Dad, people get on the nerve. What do you do when somebody push your buttons? Son, don't have any buttons. <laughs> and then nobody will be able to push them. Yeah. 
Jones. He was on the precipice of depression. Trying to figure out how he was going to take care of three boys. We thought he was a us, But he stayed. Yeah, even this year, stroke, yeah. hospital, yeah. providence, yeah. we knew he was gone, February, March, and one day he just sat up in the bed in the hospital, so I'm coming home today. Well, we 
the body going in the ground with the spirit and soul of the man that is yet in this room right now. Do you hear me now? You now. That's why I understand now when Timothy said, well, I read, I read that sermon now, and I could hear uh, my daddy's voice. Do you hear me now? That got a little piece of sound, boy. And uh, you can hear him say, hey, daughter, how you doing, sugar? Somebody hold your hope. Keep your hand in God's hand. Have I got a witness hand? I can believe y'all here, but I'm glad today that I don't have to see the because when I hear the word that the man said, I know that the man is still alive. How do I know? Well, he taught me to serve another man that died on a cross. He taught me to love another man whose head was crowned with a crown of thorns. And he taught me to put my trust in the hand of the man from Galilee. Some preacher man, help me now. Jesus, he died on Good Friday. But the word I heard was that he didn't stay dead. But oh, oh yeah, early Sunday morning, somebody say he got up, and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And because he lives. All of my fear is gone. And if you ask me how I know she's not real. No! It's simply because he lives in my heart. Now I got to tell y'all something. If Jesus lives in my heart and there he is with to me for this. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Somebody in the face and say, 